<gasps> Every time I look at this company, it gives me a heart attack. And I don't know about you guys, but this company stresses me out. Anyways, how are y'all doing? Emmy and Hilson here today with a, another quarterly report video on Nordic American tankers. NAT, baby! Here it is. The oil tanker ship, which I invested in last year because of the hype. And ever since I invested in it, it's been going down and down and down. And as you can see here, today's movement decreased of 7%. Now, is it because of a terrible earnings report that they shown out? Well, I'm here to discuss it with you guys and give my thoughts and opinions on it. All right, so Nordic American tankers, what they do is basically they store oil, all right? And this company goes as the market goes for oil, okay? Now, let's check out what they have to say especially the president has to say about this quarter, okay? So the fourth quarter in October, November, and December of 2020, let's check it out. The full year 2020 and the fourth quarter, 2020 was a good year. NET is a dividend company, good market prospects. Wow, short and straightforward to the point. I like that, okay? Uh, not agree with all of it, but uh, I like most of it. Here it is. Dear shareholders and investors, okay? Here's some of the main highlights. So in 2020, <clears throat> we've distributed 67.2 million in cash dividend and repaid our existing loan with a amount of 75.5 million. So when you invest in these oil tanker stocks, especially this one, they pride themselves on dividend, right? They pride themselves that every single quarter, we're gonna give out shareholders some type of dividend and depends on their performance on the quarter, right? If the performance is really good, sales really good, then they'll give out more. And so, if it's really bad, they'll give out really less. Okay. And so that's good that they re repaid some debt today. No, not today, but like in the, the, in the last quarter. Okay. The first half of 2020 was a strong period. Of, was a strong period for NET. Hell yeah, that was. Do you remember the time when oil prices went negative? All right, and that there was like an oversupply of oil from OPEC and you know Russia and all that agreements and stuff with Amer with America that went crazy that sh that made the, the the supply for oil super high and there wasn't much demand for it so all those during that time damn they were making so much money okay but that was basically a a trend okay that was a short trend and afterwards it dropped oh down with the with the rates of the ship so basically every day there will be uh, there will be ship rates and basically th those are the money that they earn from these ships and how much money they get from you know, you know having these ships and how much money basically oil is stored there and they get paid a certain rate okay and let's check it so after this one the third quarter of 2020 came out positively with a time chart equivalent of about $25,000 per day per ship. So that's what I exactly was saying, right? Basically every single day you get some, it's a kind of a renting rate where you get paid, you get paid this much for, you know, for them renting your ships and storing oil, storing oil on your ship. And so in the first, in the second and third quarter, that's when it went monster mode. Okay. As you look at here, right, it's called weekly tanker rates. Basically, that's how much uh, they it costs per day, and they own a lot of the sewage max max ships. And as you can see here, this week is around eight point three. I think that's in um, I think eight thousand three hundred, and then this is eight point five, which is about eight uh, eight thousand five hundred as well. So that's what it is. Obviously, the higher the number, the better, right, for the business, and looking back last year you see this may time boom can you believe it sewage max went all the way to here almost a hundred thousand a day Did you... <sighs> that was crazy that was crazy but then afterwards look at that trend it went down and down and down and down and down, down, down and that's what really caused the stock to drop significantly all right like you look at it in around april and may boom 
It's such a cyclical thing, right? This is such a trendy thing. Oh, it's it's been terrible. It's been terrible ever since I bought it. And yeah, okay. Let's resume back with the port. Uh, the fourth quarter was weak. Straightforward. It's hella weak, okay? It's like, it's just disappointment and all. Uh, the the pay rate must be terrible. Like, less, probably like $8,000 per day. And that probably doesn't cover enough to operate their ships. So, which means they're probably losing money and all. Okay, we undertook planned technician, technical maintenance of our ships during softer market periods of 2020. So, basically, when the market wasn't really that busy, they used it to, you know, work on their ships and repair it. All right, no, no problem with that. Okay, at the time of this report, so basically, during this time, right now, what's happening right now, the market has improved, and we believe that we're close to a significant positive turnaround. Remember that super cycle that everyone talks about, especially for commodity, like oil and all that, right? This, these things are really trendy in a way, okay? Like, they can go up a lot and then go down a lot. Just depends on a trend and a cycle. So, what the president's saying is that, you know what? A positive turnaround is coming. We're going to come back to probably, you know, higher ship rates, okay? That's what it is. And I do believe that it's going to happen. Okay, the full year 2020 produced a net income of 50 million or earnings per share of 34 cents. This is an improvement about 60 million compared to 2019. Okay, which basically they were losing money in 2019. Well, the thing is, most of their success, right, was really driven by the second and third quarter last year. Okay, if without it, I think this, without it, I think they will still be you know, break even or even losing money. All right, they got, you know, in a way, lucky, right, or trendy. Uh, you know, hitting that those two quarters. We see strong oil demand, particularly from Asia for 2021. Good for us. Oil will be required to improve standard of life for millions of people worldwide. Uh, I mean, like five years from now, I don't think so. But uh, right now, yes, oil still really helps the market move, you know, with cars and airplanes and all, right? So, yep, okay, that's good recovery in Asia. And it showed that in the last quarter of, la no, in the last quarter that they have financed two new sewage max ships, okay? And so making new ships, and they wouldn't do this unless they are expecting more oil supply, okay? Um, let's see what else is important to to highlight. Okay, number seven, reduce oil production from OPEC during the fourth quarter affected our earnings. Yep, the average time price equivalent for our ships is eight thousand seven hundred per day per ship. All right, I want to know how much it costs them to operate the ships per day, because this might not be enough to like make a profit. All right. We see that the market is finally balanced and there are clear signs we're going to into a stronger market. Good to see that, okay? Cash dividends are priority for NAT. In 2020, we paid 67 million or 45 cents per share in cash dividend. Yep, I still remember getting some good dividend money from that. But uh, obviously, I'm in here for the stock appreciation, okay? The dividend for this for last quarter is two cents. Two cents. Oh my God. Two cents. How many shares you have times two cents is how much you'll be getting this quarter. Basically, is nothing. All right. As communicated earlier, the coronavirus, situa coronavirus situation has not impacted us to a significant extent. And that's really about it. So it's pretty short. Uh, I'll. I want to see their cash and their balance sheet and their revenue and stuff. What's going on? Can I check it? Do they have something to show? Uh, well, they do show that they're, you know, no. Oh, they do. Yes, finally. This is what I wanted to see. All right. That's what I want to dive d deeper into. Okay, so you look at it. December 31st, 2020. 
revenue of 16,000, okay? Or, or this is actually a million, sorry about that. 16,000 or 60 million and compared that to last, you know, the third quarter, ooh, cut in half, right? And that's because of the OPEC uh, lowering their supply. And then basically that produced a loss of 22,000, ooh, yeah. Net income loss 28,000, yeah, expected. It was a weak quarter, like they said, weak as hell. When you look at it year to year, their net income was 50,000 compared to, you know, minus 10,000 to net loss of 10,000 last of 2019. When this 50,000 mainly is possible because of the second and third quarter, like I was saying, where the rates was just sky high, right, during those times. Helped them a lot, helped them a lot, I gotta say. Now let's take a look at the cash, the balance sheet, cash, nice. They have up their cash and all. Uh, let's see their debt. 39,000 in current liabilities, good. They trimmed it a little bit, paid off a little bit of debt. Total non-current liabilities. So they still got you know some good amount of debt, but you know it's nothing too worrisome at not at the moment. Now, okay. So besides that, so just the investment in their ships and all. Uh, net cash by operating activity. So cash and cash equivalent. Okay. So this one, I just want to say like. This company, okay, this company right here, it's very, in a way, cyclical, all right? It depends on the cycle of oil. You know, oil, remember last year was negative. Now it's increased to $61, okay? And there's also, right now, an uh, increase in, in demand for it because of what's happening around in Asia, in the recovery, right? In the recovery markets, as well as in America, right? Texas, of their current oil situation. That has really made supply much more needed. And now you have to really pay attention to the vaccine. If the vaccine goes out well, and you know, if vaccine does go out well, that means there's gonna be more people willing to go out again, using more transportation, you know, driving and all. You know, possibly going traveling more that uses more oil and all, then this stock will be able to recover, probably back to the four dollar and five dollar range. Okay, I don't ever see it going to like six dollar, <laughs> unless some crazy thing happens again. So yeah, uh, right now, what am I doing? Am I buying more, selling, or holding? I'm still holding. All right, even at like a fifty percent loss. Okay. I think it will be able to recover somehow and as long as I'm, I'm able to sell this stock at like a loss of 20%, you know, 20% or lower, that's already a victory for me, okay? I just don't want to sell out right now and lose like half of what I put in. So that's what it is today. This is, this is the report I've given you. It's been a long one. This is a company I, it makes me it makes me age so fast. You see, I even dyed my hair, right? Just for, I even dyed my hair just uh, just because of this company. This company makes me like have gray hair and white hair sometimes. I don't know if you can see it, but I dyed my hair brown. And just because of this company, all right? Every day I stress about it and stuff, but uh, it's been fun. It's actually been fun at the same time because like this is the only stock in my portfolio that's down, all right? And uh, I'm not perfect, right? I don't think any of us are perfect. Hard to create a perfect portfolio. Honestly, you gotta have some flaws in some way. And so uh, I hope today's report and my opinion, you know, hopefully gives you some ideas of what to do with the stock. You know, whether you wanna buy some now or you want to hold or probably sell now, right? Overall, I do believe a cycle is coming in about a few months or so, and this stock will be able to rise back. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. It's been a long one. Have a nice weekend and stay safe, stay healthy. See y'all later.